good to go. Pursuant to chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by chapter two of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so in the following manner by emailing Steve McCarthy at McCarthyS at AmherstMA.gov. That's M-C-C-A-R-T-H-Y-S at AmherstMA.gov. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event we are unable to do so for reasons of economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the Amherst website an audio or video recording, transcript, or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. That done, we'll call the meeting to order at 5.03 p.m. and take a roll call of attendance. Uh, Dylan? Here. Ellie? Here. And I'm here, so we are three here with two absent, uh, Doug and Gaston. And then next up is public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? unrelated to anything on the agenda um please hit the i can't even see do we have anybody here um no so i guess there there are no attendees so we have no public comment correct steve i guess not i guess not okay um we have no licenses so we just have discussion topics right. and we'll start with those uh discussion topic a marijuana regulation dylan you said well. something or Steve sent it around for you. I did. Uh, Steve sent it around. I'm realizing. I think I sent you guys the super rough draft, but it is. Uh, it is okay. The the rough draft isn't a whole lot different. If you look there, it's uh, essentially um, we've got our purpose there, authority, anything I've kind of highlighted in yellow there. That's essentially mm -hmm. uh, that first section there. That's just going to be changing uh, to say Mass General Chapter laws relating to marijuana. Um, is the general idea anywhere it's referencing mass general law. I'm just going to be changing that to marijuana. The big thing I actually wanted to talk about, though, with everybody here, if you scroll down, you'll see things like tip certification, manager of record, physical space, site plan, all these types of things. Um, and then if you go down even further, manager of record, employees, days and hours of operation, all of that. My idea here is I think we should really just eliminate any of that altogether, I don't think it needs a replacement because we're really talking about uh, if we're equivalent, uh, making it a equivalent to alcohol. This is really more so strictly talking like a like a package store, uh, liquor store where you're taking and consuming off premises. Um, okay. So I think a lot of these regulations that apply here to alcohol, I don't think need to apply to marijuana. <laughs> Does anybody think differently about that? Or do we all think that, that um, those major highlighted sections can just be removed entirely as opposed to kind of edited down? Um, I, let's see, maximum, well, I don't know. Um, I mean, is it possible that some of them need to stay just kind of, is there any, re like, like I'm just, my eye happened to glance on capacity. So is there any re like maximum capacity, which obviously is a problem for an on-premises, but is there any reason we'd need to, I mean, would that pertain to a package store also, or? I mean, you know, would that be more of like a health safety building inspection regulation? Right, oh, okay. Safety then. Okay, yeah. then something. Because I don't, okay. yeah, I don't think we would be out here suspending a license because they had too many people in their store. Um, okay. Whereas, you know, with a bar, that's clearly, you know, a little right. bit more in our purview because it's like, right. Yeah, we all want to pack every as many people as we can in a Friday night, guys, but right. you know, okay. it's a little different. So I'm thinking okay. that one again with hours of operation as well. This is kind of going more into that, you know, are we really operating that late night bar kind of pushing it farther than we should be? Again, days and hours of operation. I think it's, it's, you know, yeah, like at that point, are we saying like, and you have to be up the fire code? It's like, well, you know, the fire department says that, not us. Right. Um, so my kind of thinking generally when it talks about employees, again, it's talking more about um, it, it seems a little bit cumbersome to ask for uh, all of this for just a retail store where they're not really 
monitoring the consumption. Um, so that's why manager of record and employees, I don't think we necessarily need that level of um, record keeping, I guess you could say. If we wanted to keep something manager of record, maybe even just like a sentence or two of saying like, you know, you got to have a manager on record. But then I guess the real question is here with that too is, you know, Steve, do we need somebody like that? Is that one something we want to keep? And I mean, I guess for the rest of the board as well, is that something we want to um, to keep similar to how we do uh, like a bar? Do we want that same level of strictness to it when you know, they're not necessarily overseeing uh, consumption? Well, that is that does exist for um, package stores as well and things like that too. Um, so with a package store, then you know they they can't change the manager without prior approval from the board of uh, from us. Like if Spirit House gets a new manager, they have to get the approval. Is it the um, same procedure? Well, I guess depending on how you use the word manager, I mean the manager of record, yes, who's on the liquor license and supposed to have um, you know kind of. Uh, oversight over everything going on not necessarily like you know the nice shift manager or something if you use them sort of manager in that that way but yeah every every liquor licensed business does have to have a manager of record and do the change process and does the like a uh, the manager of spirit house do they submit their fingerprints to the amherst police department i don't believe they submit their fingerprints no got it okay because that's the one here where i was looking at manager of record and i was seeing something like that i'm like that seems seems like a lot and that seems like a big ask um they would have to have a background check i think they're required to be a u.s citizen for liquor licensing but um i don't think they have um, to do fingerprints i'm gonna go ahead and just delete that section then um but employees uh we all are okay the employee section just to get rid of that um let's just ask uh, yes doug hey hi doug nice to see you um see yes um, just going back to the manager record for a second, that that line of having the Corey check and the submit fingerprints part, that mm -hmm. may be part of the CCC regulation. So they're going to do it anyway. So just having us have a record of that may be all we're really sort of asking for is to like just provide the same stuff you're providing for the state level stuff. I'm just not recalling offhand. I'm just that may be why that's there. Um, I think on the employees, I think that. Um, you know. I don't know. I'm I'm a little more of an opinion given that you know marijuana retail is still new, meaning it's you know what is it four or five years now, <laughs> but um, I agree they're not necessarily you know they're not watching consumption. I mean I think that's when we get into the cafes and whatnot we'll have to deal with that. But but I think that um, there has generally been an approach of having a a higher level of expectation around the businesses because it is um, so new. Um, you know, I think uh, the other piece around sort of training that that we want to kind of and have asked for and, you know, we we certainly ask in liquor licenses for the for the tips training and and we've gone back and forth about how much detail we want regarding that. Um, and people usually tell us, yeah, that their current staff, you know, when they're applying for the license has all that, has the tips training. We ask that on any short-term license. Um, there's not the equivalent here, but I think that um, the parallel I draw is that not that there's very medical marijuana facilities or very few now, but there's, a, there's you know, as part of, you know, it as a drug for the purposes of, of like a, med, you know, a, a prescription. You, know, you have to be able to consult people about the, you know, the prescription and dosage and all that sort of stuff. So if you go to the pharmacist, you have a new drug, they actually, you know, are supposed to take a minute and talk you through the, the ins and outs of it. Um, I, I don't know. It's a little bit of that that I, I would want to keep, I think, just to be a little cautious at the beginning. But I don't know. I mean, managing it, like you say, I think the, the management of sort of keeping the list and keeping it up to date is, is a headache. But um, I don't know. They're going to, there's some things uh, they're going to have to do for us anyway around some of the, you know, payments to the, you know, for, um, for, uh, 
um, education and that sort of stuff that's kind of required in host community agreements, that sort of stuff that, that, you know, this may be just an easy thing to add to that, you know, documentation that they got to do anyway. So I don't know, I'm split mind, I guess I should say. I, um, I'll put this out because I, I, I agree. And if there were something, I think like a tip certification for marijuana, I definitely support it because I know tips, it's like a little tedious and it's a little silly, but like when you actually do it, there is good information in there that it, it's, it's worth the, you know, two hours it takes to do it. Um, the issue, you know, with, with marijuana uh, in the sense of why we want it, because it's so new, the problem is it is so new and so many of the problems haven't been discovered that, you know, if you walk into, uh, you know, if you walk into any you know, of these retail stores and you ask them about the marijuana it's it's even you know from a professional standpoint it's a lot of hand waving it's like oh well this one is this breed of this and it has this effect and it's like you don't know that it's just it's just a, a sales gimmick and we're kind of at that point and that's fine and you know if we're we're having people do a training it's like well you know what is this training i don't know if it exists yet so to say i think it might be something that i think the mistakes just might have to get made for you know people to realize oh wait now that we know it's an issue we can address it then we're to try to get ahead of it where the solution just i don't i don't think exists yet because we don't know what that problem looks like um I i'm thinking that if it doesn't exist let's uh, you know let's just kind of let it let it be is my thinking about it um one, one follow-up question and I just don't recall, is there a maximum amount you can buy at one time? Or can you just walk in and say, I'll take all of it? <laughs> the, the reason I ask that question is if there is a limit, then there's certain regulations of the CCC that the employees need to be knowledgeable of. Um, and at least need to, you know, that the employer should have them certify that they know what the CCC regulations that they have to follow are. So an example would be if there's a limit on how much you can sell in one transaction, um, if there are other sort of constraints from the CCC, that would be the the, the sort of, because I, you're, I agree, there's no tips training or parallel. Um, and and again, this is more like a package store instead of a, a retail uh, consumption, you know, restaurant bar kind of thing. But, but if there are, certain regulations that all the employees should know. And I think I think the CCC requires them when they're you know going through the CCC process to do a little bit of that. Us just getting a confirmation that they've complied with that. Because it could be that they're running simultaneous with us and the CCC application. Um, it's just a thought. But I think I, I agree with you. Yeah, let's not over-regulate in a circumstance where there's no there there yet. and it's a bunch of busy work that nobody's going to actually look at that does that's not helpful for anybody um but if there are aspects of the ccc process that we can just say hey verify this with us and i think especially if these run in parallel tracks where they're working with us and the ccc simultaneously um then having them just verify those things uh could be helpful um while they're simultaneously trying to process with the CCC. So then they don't have to do all the CCC and then wait and come to us. They can be kind of in a parallel process, but they need to give us a few of the same things they're given the CCC. Now, the, uh, I like that. I think we could even keep a line that just says, you know, uh, employees must be kept up to date and knowledgeable with regulations um, for the CCC regarding, and I'll even just write this out, uh, regarding, um, Limits on marijuana sold in one yeah. transaction. We could right. put something I in there. Like I don't, I don't necessarily mind something like that. Um, if if nothing else, if you keep this section, then if we need to add to it later, we've got the section already there. <laughs> we got that. It's a single line for now, and then yeah. we build on it if we need. It, you know. Yeah, and we've got uh, hours of operation. Um, do we want to really say anything there? I, I think, again, that's, uh, we could, but I, I think it's just, uh, I don't want to say out of our, our, our purview, but it's, it's less so because, again, I don't think anyone's operating the late night marijuana retail store, you know, quite like, you know, it's the same as somebody trying to run a bar that 
you know, open, it stays open till 2 a.m., you know, when people come up with that, you know, that brilliant idea. It's like, why don't I just sell to people under 21 and stay open till 2 a.m.? I got no competition. Uh, I don't think we're, we're running into that same issue necessarily with uh, a retail store or a, uh, a liquor store. Yeah. The, um, the other thing I'll add is that around the hours of operation is that they, they do have to get a special permit from the, um, either ZBA or, or uh, the planning board. I'm not sure who has it. I think it's probably ZBA. They're going to limit the hours. So they're going to own, you know, ZBA is going to own that. So we can let the ZBA own that. Yes, And I know uh, it's actually both. Uh, I've done it with uh, the zoning board of appeals. Uh, we approved red Cardinal, but then I believe it was the planning board. I think who had approved um, pleasant trees or it was yeah, ZBA it was before I got there. I believe so, but it could have also been the ZBAs before I got onto the ZBA, and that's why I'm misremembering it. All I know is I didn't do anything with Pleasant Trees, uh, <laughs> but I worked on the one for Red Cardinal. Right. Um, and then the other one too, uh, you know, speaking of kind of what what's handled by uh, Planning Board or ZBA was alterations of uh, physical alterations. This one I know pertained to us because you didn't want to have people create, you know, these blind zones where a bartender couldn't see and, and keep track of alcohol consumption. Um, where once again, now if a marijuana store wants to change their register location where the line forms, I think again, where I, I don't see us being concerned with uh, changes to the, the physical premise. What do you folks think about that? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. so I'm getting rid of that one too. Um, I think, yeah, the. Maybe you could share your screen as you're doing this, Dylan. I'm trying to get into the Zoom meeting on my computer. I'm on my iPad as I'm talking. Uh, let me do this. Just a moment. I'm trying, trying to join the meeting here. Okay. Uh, all right, can you uh, right, I'll mute this? Can you see uh, that I joined Steve on another account there? I should be in the audience. Yeah, I see. Oh, you're an attendee now. I'm an attendee. Uh, excellent. Uh, let me your screen host disabled participant screen sharing. I can make you a co-host, I guess. Thank you. Say when you should be all set. Uh, host disabled. Let me try again. Nope. I'm not sure yet. Oh, I might have done the wrong one. I did. I did your iPad one. Ah. Okay. All right. Ready? Go right ahead. All right. So we can all see this here. Got it. So, uh, employees, you know, just keep current accurate list of names. All right. So, I'm just going to expand this section here to just essentially say, you know, keep current with. Uh, uh, and that's just an example there. I'm going to change the wording on that. Um, yeah. But uh, again, yeah, regarding. Such as here we go. I'm just only doing one transaction, so we've got that. Um, yeah, so manager of record because we say manager must meet all CCC requirements and submit a criminal offender record information certification and submit finger drinks to the Amherst Police Department. I personally want to just get rid of this section here because if it's required that they do that by CCC, then it's required that they do that by CCC. Um, sure. 
I don't necessarily think we need um, the manager over there submitting uh, fingerprints. I'm not going to say either that it's too cumbersome. I've certainly had jobs. You know, I, I worked at a high school and I submitted fingerprints to for that job as well. I don't think it's certainly unheard of to ask for, but I just think we would need a reason to ask for it. Um, and I, I personally don't see what that reason is. Um, but if you folks do, please let me know. I, I think if there's good reason to keep it, we could. I would say if it's part of the CCC process, then I don't, I definitely don't think we need it as well. The other mm -hmm. thing with any of those is that it tells you what the circumstances at the time they do it, but you know, what about a year later when they do something? So, you know, if we're not going to continue to sort of check those records. Mm -hmm. All right. So we like that there. Uh, board in the CCC. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and say prior approval of the board because if the CCC requires it, then the CCC requires it. We don't care if they let the CCC know if the CCC doesn't care. Um, it's, all right. That'll look good there. We like manager of record. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Excellent. Um, Annotate out. Just come back to all right. Employees, we like employees. Do we want to make any changes to that, or that sounds good? I think that sounds good. Capacity, we agree. We don't care about capacity. That's in in this case not what we're really concerned about here. All right. Uh, sales to intoxicated persons. This is one. Um, we could, you know, the sale or delivery of, uh, I think it would be the sale of, sorry about the formatting, uh, is prohibited. Like, I, I don't think it hurts to keep it. Um, I'd keep it. I think just calling it intoxicated is fine. Yep. If, if, yeah. if you come into the point where it's obvious, yeah. We like that all there. Um, building, licensure, and permitting. I think this kind of might as well keep it in there. Why not? And public health emergency. Uh, I think these are both fine. It's just now a matter of, you know, changing these all to one, two, three. Four and yeah. ABCC should just be CCC at the end of that. Yeah. 504. Yeah. I had a couple where I left some in there. Like I still have to change uh, like the authority of where we're pointing to. Right. Um, right. And then the disciplinary hearings. I, I really think, you know, this makes sense to, to keep something like this in terms of what we do for uh, alcohol. We can do the same for marijuana. I, I don't see a reason why we would need to uh, treat them differently in that regard. Does anybody think we should treat marijuana differently uh, when it comes to violations? No, I think it's easiest to keep everybody the same. It's fair and consistent. Yeah. Allows for less complaints or grievances. Now, this is one that I, I thought was kind of uh, kind of weird, even that we do this for alcohol as well. So I kind of highlighted this one to get everybody's take on it. So if we suspend somebody, they have to put the, you know, no alcohol served for order of the Board of Licensing Commissioners for the town of Amherst. Now, I feel like that we're doing to let, you know, if a restaurant loses its license, it can still serve alcohol. Um, in this case, uh, or it can still serve food, just not alcohol. Um, so to have that sign out front makes, uh, makes sense, but for marijuana, are we, are we doing something like that? Do I would we... suggest we have well, some sort of I notice. Mean, mm -hmm. A consumer might want to know in a yeah, sense, okay. like, you know, I'd rather go buy my pot from a place that hasn't had a violation. I'm just. Yeah, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I would agree. I think some sort of notice is appropriate. You know, it you know, like, hey, why are they locked? It's Tuesday at three o'clock. They're always open Tuesday at three o'clock. Oh, I see. 
oh, they broke the rules. Maybe I should buy from somebody that's, or maybe, you know, maybe that makes them want to buy there more. I don't know, you know, <laughs> but yeah, I think some notice makes some sense just so it, you know, if you see the store hours on the door and they're not open mm -hmm. during those, then it's like, oh, here's why. Well, on that, Excellent. you know, if a store ever branches out to selling other accoutrements that don't contain marijuana, it might, they could still technically be open then, maybe. Right. So you're saying if they're selling Doritos and Oreos along with the, with the. Yeah, yeah or mm -hmm. t-shirts. Yeah, t-shirts or whatever, then they can still be open. Right. Okay. Um, all right. So I'll go ahead and just make this essentially say that. I know we have, uh, with the exception of uh, what do we want to say? Just uh, we can even just delete this whole thing here. Excuse me. Uh, delete this whole thing here, with the exception of restaurants. Uh, maybe on the premises of such time. I'm just going to go ahead and remove this whole section then, as it's carving out um, yeah an exception for uh, restaurants, but. I think it's implied here. Uh, and this was something that seemed to just apply to when the this section here was adopted for uh, alcohol, saying that uh, that specific section was going to take place April 1st. I think it was to what give give people time to come into compliance with that. Right. Cool. So I think we can get rid of that section entirely. Uh, and then this is section eight. Section seven. So what do we think? Any other major changes we're looking to make here? Or is this all kind of flow well? It's just going to be a matter of uh, just cleaning up some of this, this language here, um, and then just changing the authority, which, Steve, I think I want to work with you on that one just to see what is uh, mass general law that we should have this kind of all point to in terms of our authority here. Because do we have this authority yet explicitly in Mass General Law? No. I believe there's kind of a catch-all section in one of those chapters, but okay. I don't, it's not explicitly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think I think there's a, a section of Mass General Law that says that um, a town may create licenses as they see fit, and your licensing board is the one that you know, regulates and enforces those licenses. Some some generic thing like that, where it's not specifically alcohol. Oh, right. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. Because I think we have one for something really like secondhand stores or something like that, you know, thrift shops or something that we have that's not like in state statute, but we have, or, or a keg law. Actually, our keg by law that had a, uh, I think had essentially that same same thing where where you essentially get a one-day license for a keg. That's not a state thing at all. We created that under the broad general license or license language. Perfect. So I think we got that there. Uh, the last thing I just want to change is just wherever I'm saying marijuana. I want to switch it to say retail marijuana because I want it to define that as a store that sells marijuana for recreational use, consumed off-premises to make it clear that these are uh, the regulations that we're having apply to retail stores that currently operate and i think we'll be taking a different approach uh when we start thinking about how we want to do um uh, on-site consumption should it go that way so just one question there do do we that would mean if you wanted to open just a medical marijuana shop you wouldn't have to get the license that's my understanding um are we looking to do something different for medical well, I think you could just say, you know, for med medicinal or recreational use. So you could you could kind of put it there and it covers both and then they have to go through the same process. I mean, that's just the way I thought of it. Um, most of them aren't both at this point. They're just doing the recreational because medical's a lot of hoops to jump. But it's, we'll it's say you know, this is part that's a really critical part, I think, you know. Yeah, I'm fine to say medicinal or recreational. Yeah. Um, the I guess my question there is is there some reason why we would want to um, not weigh in on medical my my initial feeling was no but 
I mean, that now that it's being questioned even a little bit, I'm like, yeah, I guess we can regulate it the same. I, I think it's just consistent because, you know, often places want to do both. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's the same process for everybody. And, and I don't know, I, I find it's just consistent. So I think that, you know, it's like, oh, this is the process you have to do if you want to sell it. Cool. Regardless of, you know, whether you're doing it as medical or recreational or both. All right. Um, well, how do we like all these as they are? Do we just agree? Last thing I'm going to do is change around um, authority and what chapters we're pointing to and just anywhere else where I've left in uh, ABCC. Other than that, do we like the way this reads? Do we think there's anything else that we should include? Um, I don't think so. I think it looks good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Dylan. All right. Thank you, Dylan. Yeah. All right. Then I will put on the finishing touches to this, and then we can vote on it um, next time we all meet. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah. So do we, so we can vote on, these are the regulations, right? And not the bylaw that, not the bylaw and that's going to come that's a separate part right yeah that one's uh that'll be separate gaston is working okay. on that one gaston's working on that. okay all right that sounds great all right i think it'd be good to have an attorney go over it too dylan's this is kind of a breaking new ground and i'd be happy to go over it too in a little bit more detail than i had a chance to do so today and mm -hmm. um we can bring it back and, and maybe try to uh you know coordinate the town council as well with that bylaw and, and take a look at that and just make sure everything uh integrates properly yeah uh that yeah definitely let's have a, an attorney look at it make sure that it all looks good and there isn't something glaring that we should have included in here as well um i definitely think is a good idea but i'm comfortable with them as they as they are with those needed changes yeah okay great thank you so much dylan absolutely We'll look forward. So we'll see the next draft at our next meeting. Uh, uh, yes. Okay, super. Great. Um, okay, so uh, discussion topic B, lunch carts and food trucks on Prey Street. Steve? Yes, so um, that uh, should be a go for tomorrow. Oh, great. We have two food trucks coming. La Vera Cruzana has a food truck and Rooster's Roman Cantina, which um, we has been doing it um, and along Kendrick Park. So they'll be getting there at eight and serving by 8.30 until 2 a.m. And they'll be cleaning up afterwards. Um, road will be blocked off by the police department at eight and um, should be, uh, should ho hope it's a success. We'll see. Fantastic. Busy Halloween weekend, but um, yeah, should, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, yeah. It's exciting. Sounds, yeah, it's very exciting. Yeah, thank you so much. Any questions for Steve about the uh, new and exciting? Has there been uh, marketing on UMass campus or anything? I don't think like that we've that? done any marketing or outreach. I mean, I think it could be good to to not have it get mobbed the first time and yeah. see what the foot traffic is like. And, um, yeah. you know, this is just a pilot program. So we'll see how it goes and um, take some, uh, some first baby steps tomorrow. Great. Great. Super. Thank you. Um, so we'll look forward to hearing about that. Um, okay, C, process for chair and vice chair elections. And Gaston brought this up last time because we last voted on chair and vice chair in 2021 or in 2020. I think it was 2020. 2020. And so it was a long time ago. It was after we were online. So um, I guess we want to think about that. Um, um, I do have, I did check, I wrote down in my notes somewhere that we'd maybe talked about years ago, talked about doing the elections in January or after the appointments were made uh, sometime after renewal season in the first of the year. So I don't know, does anyone have any ideas? Should we just- um, I can say I did reach out to the okay. town clerk and the only um, really rules on this would be, um, you know, just Robert's rules of order, the normal voting procedure. So however the board wants to structure it would be fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I know I talked to uh, Gaston about it uh, earlier today, which I think the general consensus, it's where we we would love to, to keep having you as chair, Marion, so long as you're willing to do it. 
um <laughs> the uh but we should definitely get uh in terms of of getting back to doing the 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 proper formalities of of actually doing the elections of it okay yeah. um the um i mean i talked to gaston i know he's not looking to do chair or vice chair okay uh, so I think he's he's fine with the if we even wanted to to if we have consensus we can even take a vote now to to nominate our uh, our chair if we want to do it. Does anyone want to to officiate it or do we want to uh, do we want to put the stamp on with everybody? Uh, yeah, Doug. I'll offer yeah. a couple of things. So I think to actually do the the election, we just we have to put it as the election of chair vice chair, and then generally what happens in that circumstance is that Steve runs the meeting until the chair is elected and the chair runs the vice chair, just formal steps and stuff. But we can have that on any agenda at any time. So, you know, we can pick whatever. Um, I was just looking at when our terms end and they're, they're all June 30th. Okay. So, you know, oftentimes the board will always, when they get new membership, um, sort of take that topic up. So we could do January or we could do July because that's, you know, July is when, when things will, will turn over um but you know we can also by consensus say yeah we don't need to do anything <laughs> so do you just should we wait till july or is there anyone have a burning need to to change or i to... i don't you two are doing a fabulous job i i'd say let's wait for gaston to be at a meeting but i think yeah, yeah. If terms if terms are july then I or June thirtieth, then I think we should plan on having elections in July. Moving forward. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Dylan? Does that sound good, or did you want to? Are you? Did you want to be chair or vice chair? I, I have. I have absolutely no desire to be chair. Uh, okay. I would. I would accept vice chair on the condition that I don't actually have to do any chairing. So okay. I have no burning passion to do either. <laughs> um, How about you? <laughs> <laughs> well and do you want to wait i mean i feel like do you want to wait till after town council elections dylan because if you win i don't know if you can be on this board well don't worry i'm not winning uh you missed you missed that conversation <laughs> and i uh my, my work has uh has picked up immensely this last month it's been the real busy season for us so i've gotten to knock on doors since like actually turning in my papers like one night so far as how much I've gotten out there. Uh, so I'm not worried about that. But even post-election uh, right now, I, uh, I have a lot going on that I, I'm not looking to chair. I will put that out up front. Um, if, if I were, we'd be, we'd be talking June, July anyways when I would okay. be even thinking, considering that. I uh, Look, look, we're all volunteer bureaucrats. We love our bureaucracy. We love our procedure. I just love following the having the vote to reinstate uh reinstate mary and making it official on there um but uh, i i honestly um have no strong preference on this uh i'm, I'm happy to wait till uh july when okay. we would normally do it i think we can definitely just kind of get it back into the uh the rotation of things we do okay well i guess we can i guess we can wait till july and um if that's okay and then does gaston have a I guess he should be able to speak for himself. Did he like express a strong preference or he was just, just thought of no. it? No. Okay. I don't think he really, yeah. He, he I, I think on the same team, not to speak for Gaston, but uh, the sense I got is uh, just the, the, the following of procedure um, okay. as a strong preference. Cause I know I asked Gaston, I was like, what are you, are you, are you looking to do? He's like, no, God, no. <laughs> He's going out to, Northeastern University. I know he's um he's looking at um he's got a lot on his, his plate as well. So uh, I think I think Marion, really, we'd be giving you the opportunity <laughs> to jump ship if you wanted to. Uh, but if you're looking to do it, I think you've got everybody's support here. So okay, I I didn't really you know it was just didn't really matter to me if someone wanted to be chair. I'm very happy to step aside, you know, or take a vote. But I'm also, you know, I can wait till July. I th no matter what, I think you're stuck till July. Okay. All right. You're not getting out of it. <laughs> I think, is that the not it kind of? <laughs> it's, it's a little bit the not it, you know? <laughs> okay. 
Sorry, you couldn't do that for school committee, Doug. I know. <laughs> All right. Exactly. So we will wait till July. Um, sound good, everybody? And yeah. Okay. All right. Um, let we where are we? Okay. A B C D license renewal and consideration of businesses not open. So I was talking to Steve about this and I noticed and Steve um that what is it? It's not protocol, it's the other one, the oyster bar whose license we granted in 2021 is still under construction or not open. And yes. um, we are not at quota, correct, Steve? But still, they, like they're, and you know, maybe their landlord is happy, but they're still sort of in a business spot in town and not running a business, you know, with a light, using the license. So, and I know that that's, I don't know what's going on there. Um, I know the other one I noticed was the Chinese restaurant, the new one, and I know that's a common Vic but still it's just, you know, and I don't know how much we want to get into this, but like, what do we do about businesses which have licenses, but have not been using them in some case for more than a year. And there's also the coffee shop in South Amherst. Yes, the coffee shop. And then the place, um, I don't know what's going into where Kelly's used to be. If they have a common Vic, did they come before us? They did. Um, I heard from uh, town councilor Anna who said, asked, if we could support help them i'm like we don't have the money but i guess they ran into some health department issues yeah yeah but okay i think maybe we just send a letter just checking to see right and now steve you pointed out that the oyster bar is going to come up for renewal this year i mean in in december right yep they would yeah so i we think were there, um, we were yeah, there for been... dinner Two weeks ago and they said november for the oyster bar when i asked oh they did okay true, but... okay um so i don't know what should we get doug do you have any ideas i the thought i have is this i think in in circumstances where um they're not open i think if they're in the process like oyster bars trying to open right um you know i think we're probably more lenient in that circumstance i would suggest we should be um if they are um able to show that they're continuing to have access and control of the property. Mm -hmm. um, I think in circumstances um, where their lease is not, or their ownership is not as, as clear, you know, like they're not open. I think we have the right to ask the question when they renew, do you still have access to the property? Cause we've run into that where we, we didn't ask that question and they didn't, or they were losing it. They were in process of losing it. Right. Um, so I think we want to, in, in cases that we have questions about um, their access to the property, I think we, we want to pose that question about whether they will continue to have uh, access or not. Okay. I mean, you know, if they're in a conflict with their landlord, I don't know if we want to get in the middle of that, you know, but, but if they clearly have access to the property and, uh, you know, I think it's a different question if we're at quota. Right. Okay. Um, but if if they're if we're not at quota, then I think it's a matter of you know do we have a sense that they're gonna they're continuing to try to open, and if they are, okay. then I think you know hey if you want to pay us another thirty five hundred dollars, we'll take your money. Okay, so we don't have to worry. So we'll just ask them when they come up for renewal, and the same goes for everybody else. Or do we just just be patient because people have problems or struggles? Yeah, I think you know. We should just, you know, I would say to Steve is just to ask for, you know, confirmation they still have access and and permission to be on the property. Okay. Yeah, right. I, I do believe Amherst Oyster Bar does. They are still under construction and they're okay. actively being inspected. So I know they do. Yeah. Okay. All right. And then um, some of the other places are just... Yeah, I mean, I don't really know if we have to worry about common VIX at all, liquor licenses. I mean, part of the renewal is that they have to certify they still have a uh you know they're still they're still in operation and um i guess they can put an asterisk there and you know plead their case before the board for renewal but common vix have no such requirement so you know there's no quota okay. for those I, I don't think that's really anything to stress about if they want to get it and maybe they'll open and maybe they won't i mean there's no, okay. no shortage of common vic licenses okay it's just not something we have to worry about okay that's all i wanted to know all right so great um next one e licensing fee review so steve 
sent around a chart and you said steve there's a window coming up or opening up or yeah as the um, as the budget is being worked on for next year there is a bit of a window to reconsider fees and um i know we had talked about this a couple of years ago at this point or maybe yeah you know, something a year and a half something like that and um we ended i think we ended up changing just the um all alcohol off premises fee but um there was consideration that you know well, some of these don't really make sense and um you know maybe we should kind of go over it more uh more comprehensively so i thought this would be a good time to start that conversation i know we had some um comparison you know fee comparisons with other towns that have been done at that point um i could send those along as well um yeah, i don't really know uh you know what philosophy people would like to take or um how to balance these different things. Some things do seem pretty auto act to me, like the wine and malt general on premises is a thousand, but the all alcohol is 3,500. That seems like quite a difference for not really a huge variation in, um, in ability. Um, so also something like the wine and malt restaurant club off quota. I'm not even sure what that's supposed to represent. Okay. Um, so when it when would these have to be like what is the end of the deadline? When is the deadline? That is a good question. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think okay. it's um, you know, like two weeks from now. But I would say we should definitely uh, get working on this if if, if any changes. Nobody okay. wants to make any changes. Yeah, I think Gaston did those fee comparisons last year, the year before. So should we just take a look at them again? Yeah. Yeah, I can send those along for people to look at and. Okay. And then we'll put it on the agenda for next time question yes Dylan uh, well, I guess two questions one coin off amusement didn't we eliminate those yes okay. yes we did I guess we just forgot to take that off the, oh yeah uh, oh that's list, uh, so. that's September 16th um, and then the uh, I know I think we we learned this when we got that that license back the fees have to just be what the cost is of administering the licenses am I correct about that there is some kind of statute along those lines. I don't know exactly. I think it says, if you say something more about the cost of the town, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I'll have to review exactly what that language is in that statute. Because uh, I mean, let's let's not sell ourselves short. Because Steve, you know that these are, uh, you know, the work that goes into it more than we do. And if we're coming in low here, you let us know. Um, but you know, a lot of these kind of I think make sense. A one day license seems to be yeah pretty low which that one seems pretty, pretty which scary. makes sense I, I i can't imagine that a, a one-day license takes a, a a whole ton of processing but i don't know how much goes into uh, an all alcohol general on-premises license on your end steve or down in town hall so i uh, uh i probably not all that much you know not 35 times as much as a, a short term but i think um you know, a lot of communities also price in the cost of emergency response and other yeah. externalities and, that might come out of and, that. That's what yep. I was going to offer. Police coverage and, and emergency response is part of what you're trying to collect with some of those other licenses. Because um, there's, you know, other costs of town. Do we do we think we accurately captured that or do we think we're, we're a little bit under? Because I know uh, policing is not cheap. Fire uh, is not cheap. Um do we think we're a little bit low in that regard, I guess, is the real question here? Or do we think that's accurate? I don't know. Uh, Doug? I'd say for me, I, I think the 3,500 is kind of not a bad place. I think we'll have to, I think the comparison will be helpful in that regard. I think some of those that are 1,000 for just the wine and malt could probably be a little higher because I don't think they should be quite as high as all alcohol, but, but at the same time, wine and malt, you know, um, you know, they they have some of the intended uh, costs and hassles as as all alcohol. Um, you know, you have to you have to drink a you know a lot more beer to get to the same place as shots. But you know, <laughs> regardless of how you get there, the resulting problem is the same as far as you know what we deal with as a community. So that's that's my thought at the moment. I I, I think the comparison will be helpful. I think the thirty five hundred is kind of in the right neighborhood for that one. You know, whether some of the others might need a little bump. Um, I think that's you know what we think about between now and the next time. Okay. Great. 
So any other questions about this? If not, Steve, you will send around those license, those fee comparison charts. Yes. And we can talk about it more next time. Great. Great. Thank you. Oh, and next up is um, agenda items for next time. So we have marijuana regulations. We have license fee comparison. Um, what else do we have? Oh, Steve, are there any license there? There said there's some short terms pending and also from UMass and also the new one that's going into where Hazel's Blue Lagoon was, correct? Is that Yeah, the, so there time? are some short terms. Those are all um, well into February. So okay. um, we will put those on and we get a chance, but um, okay. those have time to work their way through. I did get the check for that today. Okay. Um, and yes, the Gabe's Underground, which is going in where the former Hazel's was, will be coming. Um, That's the one from Westfield? Yeah, yep. And that'll be um, maybe not. Um, I guess this is also a question. Are we were we going to uh, revert back to the first and third Thursdays? So oh, also, right. Yeah. Hello, or Thanksgiving may be um, it is the right. 23rd. So, yeah, we would want to do that. Yeah. So, can we do, is everyone okay with doing? the November 2nd and then November 16th. Yes. And then we skip the 23rd is Thanksgiving, right? Yep. And we can, that leaves the 30th open in case we need a meeting for some reason, but maybe not, probably not. And then we go back to December 7th and December 21st. Yeah, this would, um, and maybe we should wait for guests on, but we do want to maybe think about our, um, our schedule because usually it's good to have a uh, a meeting late in December for those last minute renewals that came in so they can be voted on. Right. Um, so it, that leaves like the 28th, maybe the 28th, if ever people are around or if, as long as we have three people. I mean, um, obviously, that's a busy week and busy time right. of year. So, um, you know, we could just kind of try to schedule a special meeting at a weird time if need be to just kind of approve the last um the last things that come in, but um, we could do it New Year's Eve. We could just be part of the part of the festivities of New Year's Eve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on the time. I'll be on an airplane on New Year's Eve. <laughs> Very exciting. I uh, yeah, I'm more than happy to to dial in for for ten minutes on New Year's Eve. It'll be a, a fun way to 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 bring out the year. Yeah, I'm. Um, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it Sunday. Count me in ten minutes. Right. <laughs> Dialing in, no camera. I'll be somewhere. Right. I think the Thursday is probably better, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I Let's guess just something to keep in mind. I also don't really know if we will have um that much to discuss next on the second. Um oh, okay. I think the sixteenth would be good. I think that should give us a good timetable for Gabe's underground when they want to come in. Um well, November sixth. Do we just wanna yeah. So are you su suggesting that possibly, you know, we just cancel the meeting or we could just keep the second and then if nothing turns up, push off, push it off until the 16th? Or um, I am just spitballing here, but we could tentatively um, push off the 16th, uh -huh. maybe the 30th, um, the 14th and the 28th. Oh, that's a, that's a brand new schedule, Steve. Okay. That would just kind of keep us um, on Thursdays. I mean, I'm just, I'm just totally spitballing here. I haven't really even thought this out, but it just struck me. Um, we will want to kind of have uh, have one meeting kind of late, but that would keep us, you know, roughly every two weeks going forward. Okay. Does that sound but good to people? If maybe we don't need that, I don't know. I'm just kind of shooting out ideas. Yeah, we could do that. It's a radical departure. We do the, we do the what is that? The one, two, Boy, a lot of weeks in November, huh? Yeah, because yeah, there's five weeks in November, so. Um, so that's like the third and the fifth week of November, and then the. So really, the change would be and, shifting the shifting the kind of from the. Yeah, it'd just be first back. and third to. Third and fifth in November, and, and then in December, switching from first and third to second and fourth. And fourth, right? We could just do that. Does anyone have a? We can we, we can check our schedules and okay. um, we wouldn't have to make this decision today. I guess um, 
I guess the question would be, do we, I don't know if I will have any word back from the attorney um, okay. for, the, for the marijuana by, by the second. Um, you have no, so you've got nothing, right. You wouldn't have anything back by the attorney. You have no, you, the short terms aren't due until February. You won't have yep. anything from Gabe's until the middle of November. And all we'd need would be the, um, and the, oh, and you need to find out the, the deadline for the licensing fee changes. And that is not, that's by the end of the year, you think? I don't know exactly. I'll have to check on that. I don't think it's like, you know, November 5th or anything, but. Right. Um, well, if we have no licenses and no short-term licenses and discussion topics until we hear back from the lawyer. Well, really... we, we could talk about um how the, how the, the food trucks went, um, the elections process for elections and. Okay. Um, the fee review if we if we wanted to i guess I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys it doesn't make much of a difference to me okay what does everybody think do we want a meeting next week or do you want to just wait till the 16th Any I wait, but... go either I... way any preference doug do you think no 16th is fine 16th okay Let's just do the 16th and the 30th. Does that sound good? Yep. Okay. And then the, what was it? The 14th and the 28th? Uh, I mean, you, 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 we can all check our schedules. We can check with Gaston too, but maybe I'll just send an email with that proposal. We'll, okay. we'll confirm the next meetings. The two next meetings are the 16th and the um, 30th. Yes, that would be great. Thank you. And we will... Um, and then we will um, go and, you know, potentially the 14th and the 28th. Although really with um, with that time of year, I mean, it's good to have one in that last week. Right. Um, just so the people who are late for renewal can, late on renewal can, can get their license renewed before the first and not have to wait for us to have a meeting before they can reopen from the year, new year. Okay. Um, but um, we can, uh, um, but yeah, we can, you know, it can be really any time. We're all flexible that time of year, I guess. So we're busy and okay. flexible. So, all right, great, super. So the sixteenth, it is. Um, let's see. Uh, topics. Oh, I don't know. This is maybe an agenda item, but also under topics not anticipated forty-eight hours prior to the meeting. Does anyone have one? I have one. Um, mm. Yes. So I heard from town council that we need the annual report. They've actually let me know a month before instead of a week before the report, annual report is due. <laughs> so that will be going, I'll have a draft, I hope, uh, by the 16th, everyone can review it. And if you have anything to go on the annual report, send it to Steve, who can send it to me. And that's my topic. Um, any other topics? No? Okay. If not, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you, Doug, is there a second? Second. Thank you, Dylan. Um, let's take a vote. Dylan. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Doug. Aye. And I vote aye. That is four to zero with one absent. We're adjourned at 6.01 p.m. All right. Thank you, everybody. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank thanks, Steve. See you on the 16th. Bye. Bye. See you all then. Yeah.